three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You got to get more athletic and better defensively, right? You got to get better shooting. And if you can do those two things and hope that Darvin takes the next step, if you bring him back, that could be better. But if you don't do that, you must, you must, 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 must want anything the Lakers. You must get rid of Rob Palenka and get a better basketball guy. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Morenzi, the pips, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. Let's do this thing. The Monday night meltdown has begun. We've got a lot of stuff to break down on this meltdown uh, tonight, including NBA basketball and NHL hockey, both Dallas teams currently in action. We've got news as far as the other Dallas team is concerned as well. But let's start off in the association. The Dallas Mavericks are up 30 to 18 right now, late in the first quarter of play. They're currently laying seven and a half. The total is two twelve and a half in this basketball game right now. Meanwhile, the Dallas Stars are in action. The Road Warrior, uh, Dallas Stars, in the Mile High City uh, right now. The game is scoreless. We played about seven and a half, eight minutes uh, so far. Updated number: the Colorado Avalanche minus one twenty-five to win the game. The Stars are minus one hundred five. The total is five and a half uh, right now. We've got Major League uh, Baseball. Uh, going on there's a spillover from the earlier games uh, right now we're in the top of the 10th inning with the Phillies and the Mets the Pirates and the Brewers are also late in a baseball game and uh, we've got early baseball going on including the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants in the Bay the Dodgers are up uh, one nothing uh, right now early in this baseball game as we're going into the second inning the Dodgers with an early one nothing lead. The Dodgers obviously were favorites in this game. Minus two ten at uh, close. They're currently minus three forty. The total is eight and a half uh, right now in this game. The Strohs lead the Athletics. Uh, we've got the Cards and the Angels just getting started. Scoreless in the bottom of the second inning. KC and Seattle all also scoreless in the second. And in fact, uh, most almost everything is scoreless. Cincinnati and Arizona. If you still want to get in on it. Although Arizona have runners on first and third right now, and Colorado have scored early on San Diego, so it could be a good spot to buy in on San Diego uh, right now at like minus one thirty-five, as they were big favorites against the Rockies after a good weekend against uh, the Dodgers, minus one twenty-five uh, right now. That'll be our first recommendation of the evening live on the program. San Diego minus one twenty-five against uh, Colorado. You get, you know, you just saved yourself like a full dollar, right? They were like minus 230, 235 or whatever. Suddenly they're minus 125. You're only down a run. So I think the, the San Diego pick is a good one. We're on Yamamoto to record the uh, the victory for the Los Angeles Dodgers. 
the strikeout prop, they've 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 pretty much got it down where he he gets right there all the time. So I've learned my lesson with the strikeout props. I'm just gonna say, you know what? They're gonna win the game, and he's gonna pitch good enough to get the W uh, tonight at minus one thirty five. Not a bad price. We played Otani over one and a half total bases as well. We're on the Dallas Mavericks to win the basketball game. We parlayed it with the Boston Celtics plus money plus one hundred four. And uh, we're on the Colorado Avalanche in this game. A desperate Colorado Avalanche team that needs this game. Doesn't mean they're going to get it because they need it. Uh, but I think they'll find a way. You know, this this game could go to overtime uh, tonight, the way that this series has been going on. Uh, but this is a big-time hockey game tonight as far as the series is concerned. There's always talk about, like, when series is actually start. To me, that's when it gets real. Whenever a team is suddenly up 2-1, that's when it's like, all right, you know what? This is getting serious now, right? If we lose the next game, we're down 3-1. To me, that's when it's like, okay, this this really starts to matter right now. You can lose the first game. You can lose the second game. It's not good, but it's not the end of the world. But once you start to get, you know, you're down 2-1, look at the Edmonton Oilers right now. The Edmonton Oilers are under a lot of pressure. Suddenly, the media is panicking. They don't know what they're going to do with their goaltending situation. They're busy crying uh, to the National Hockey League about the Vancouver Canucks playing too rough uh, with them. And they know if they lose this next game, like their fans are going to turn on them. They're going to be down 3-1, and it's going to get ugly fast. Meanwhile, Kaniac stayed positive, and the Carolina Hurricanes suddenly are back in this thing. Doesn't it seem like it was just yesterday that uh, both New York teams were on top of the world with the Rangers and the Knicks don't look now, but in a New York minute, suddenly the Pacers look like they're going to win that series. And the Carolina Hurricanes right now have a legitimate chance of winning the series. Like you could make an argument that both New York teams are about to lose and it'll be like a monumental same city collapse. But I think the Knicks are in bigger trouble than the Rangers are, right? Anything can happen in hockey, and there's not really momentum from game to game, right? As long as the Rangers, you know what I mean, like show up one of these nights. Carolina sort of have the momentum right now, but the Rangers, like it only takes one. The Knicks are in trouble because the Knicks got to win a couple of games now, and they're just not healthy enough to do it. And the Pacers are healthy enough to do it. And the Pacers are playing with a pace. Great job by Carlisle. You know, you play up-tempo, you know the Knicks can't keep up. So we have a lot of stuff to break down uh, this evening on the program. A lot of live action to break down. NFL football, the schedule is going to be released in less than 48 hours' time. We're fired up just to see how it's all going to play out. Yet the uh, the slow drips have begun. Dallas just came very close to scoring. Uh, the slow drips have begun. We do know... We already knew that the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers were playing on the Friday night, the opening week, the Friday night after the Thursday night in Brazil, right? The NFL is going all out this year. They got games on Wednesdays. They got games on Fridays. They're playing on Christmas. Like they're, you know, they're they're on a Wednesday. They're going hardcore this year. So they're opening up on the Thursday night, September the 5th, with the Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. And um, then the following day, the Friday, September the 6th, we're live from Brazil with the Green Bay Packers and the um, the Philadelphia Eagles, a battle of green in a stadium in which green is banned, which is pretty an interesting dynamic. And we now know that the Dallas Cowboys will be taking on the Cleveland Browns in week one in C-Town. So they continue to sort of drop selected games, and that'll be Tom Brady's broadcast debut. You know, it's you figure for a guy that retired, you know, like he wouldn't be like as annoying, but like Tom Brady never goes away, does he? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like, okay, he's gone, it's enough. Okay, go and do your thing, Tom. Like most people, they ride off into the sunset and you know, it's all good. They're playing golf and they're hanging out with hot hot women and they're on their yachts and they're living it up, okay? Not Tom Brady. We gotta watch him in a row. So now we gotta go oh, Tom Brady's broadcast debut. So, yeah, Tom Brady's broadcast debut on television will be that uh, Dallas Cowboy-Cleveland Brown uh, game. The Oklahoma City Thunder going a little bit of a run right now. 32-25, making a game of it. Dallas were up by double digits early, but they didn't keep the pedal to the metal, which they might live to regret. 
right? You see in these NBA games, you can really just suck the life out of the other team. If you just smoke them in the first and just like eliminate them, like kind of like what the Pacers did to the next, just eliminate them, take them like, you know, make them want to tap out by the midway through the third quarter. But uh, the, um, the Oklahoma City Thunder have done a nice job surviving that early storm and the punches uh, that uh, the Dallas uh, throw at them. So speaking of punches, there's a lot of stuff to unpack, and people from Edmonton are throwing punches at me online. Oiler fans are turning on your boy uh, right now. I've had, like, longtime Rageaholic fans. Uh, one person told me I've lost my rage for whatever reason because – I don't really see how I've lost my rage if I don't think anybody should get suspended for doing anything. And I don't see how I've lost my rage because you're disappointed that your favorite hockey team is letting you down once again. But don't say I didn't warn you. And they can suspend whoever the hell they want to do. And they can do this. They can do that. But all it's going to do is galvanize the Vancouver Canucks even more than they already are uh, right now. Our boy Avery's going to step up and in from Edmonton. Avery's uh, on the beat with the Oilers. We'll get his take. Joe Madden in the house, the Raging Redhead Camp Stewart, George Kurtz, our boy Mo Khan. We've got a lot of stuff to unpack, including NFL uh, mini camps. Countdown to tip off is on in the WNBA as well. And uh, we got a bunch of WNBA best bet futures for you. This is Sports Rage. Bring it. Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still in six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you've got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and Ant Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Every missed call, the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. is actually far more dangerous from three on the road. Home. This game here, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late sort night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Rancy. The pitch, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. The Monday night uh, meltdown continues. And uh, we've got a, um, in the words, actually, of Carson Soucy, as he stated, describing cross-checking Connor McDavid to the face, he said it was an unfortunate incident. <laughs> and um, we have our, our own unfortunate incident going on right now. Not my first dance. You know, when you're on the air as long as I've been, Fires are going to happen. And I've told the famous story before in which I was doing a live show on the radio and the fire alarm started going off for real. 
like loud in the building and stuff. And it was just me and an operator in the middle of the night. And he got up and he started to get his jacket and everything. And I'm doing the show. And I looked over to him and I said, what do you think you're doing? And he goes, there's a fire alarm going on. I'm going to go outside. And I said, no, you're not. I said, I said, don't worry about it. It's a false alarm or something. I said, don't worry. I said, it's fine. I said, if the fire department shows up and starts flipping out, we'll get the hell out of here. Don't worry about it. He's like, no, no, you can't make me stay. I actually like fired him on the spot. I told him, if you walk out this door, you're never doing the show again. And <laughs> I actually knew how to work the phones myself. So I was live on the air taking calls and I had the fire Amazing. alarm going off in the background. All right, Cam and Joe, Amazing. I had a fire alarm yeah. going off and they're like, ring and I'm taking calls and I'm all like, yeah, the show must go on. You know, it's all, it'll be fine. And then a couple of minutes later, the fire department walk into the studio, like firemen start flipping out at me and stuff about uh, what an idiot I am. I'm sitting right above a dental office that's highly flammable. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you know, so if that dentist yeah. office goes off, you're yeah. done. He goes, what are you, an idiot? Suddenly, I was like, oh, okay, okay. So we, we ended the show, and um, <laughs> it was a big deal. Like, I was, it was a corporate place. Like, HR flipped out. Like, I got called in. I had to, like, sign a thing. Next time there's a fire, I must, like, evacuate and not try to force people to stay. <laughs> so good. now... Here we go, about 15 years later, Cam, 20 years later. Here we go again. There's a fire. And old Pat, I'm scared of a fire foster, has to abandon ship. Very disappointed. If you walk out this building, you're fired. Okay. Great boss, Morenzi. Those are the old days when things were hardcore, as opposed to worrying about your safety. I'd be like, you leave this room. You're never doing this show again. People don't understand. I lived, I, when I came back from up north, Gabe, I lived uh, with a dental office in the building, too. And you're absolutely right. They have tanks Yeah, and I didn't stuff think and about it, it but yeah, those yeah, tanks no. are flammable. Like, like, <laughs> I remember once he had an incident, too, and he goes, listen, man, if you're out of here, the whole neighborhood's going to blow up. I'm like, okay, I'm listening. So, yeah, no, people don't understand. Uh, the dentist, uh, you get your gas, don't light a match. Bah. So, there's, oh. a, there's, a, uh, there's an unfortunate incident. We don't know if there's a real fire, a false alarm, whatever is going on right now at our headquarters in new jersey uh right now and everybody had to evacuate and against management's better judgment they basically have just left us on and they yes. said listen we're gonna come back we're gonna come back and hopefully we're back but we have to uh, we have to evacuate the building our boy Frankie's fine sitting across the street from MSG besides the Rangers yeah. choking. Uh, but our boy Frankie's fine. Good to know you're okay, Frankie. Um, but we've lost control and uh, communication with everybody. We're on our own uh, right now. And even I said, so what, you you think I'm going to, I can sit here for three hours commercial free and just go on? Yeah. <laughs> this is just, and I, I guess too, there's going to be like automated Things are automated, so we're going to cut in and out and stuff like that along the way, Joe, which um, yeah. hopefully this fire alarm doesn't take too long, but uh, good to see you, Joe. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm sure it won't take too long, and I'm glad you didn't scream at anyone that they're going to get fired if they left the work, so good for you. <laughs> it's a control. Control their game. I'm not in control anymore. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. That's the thing. We, we have that's no control. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I was in a position of power, I'd feel differently about the situation, but no, I understand in the modern litigious world, like yes. you must evacuate, and the Dallas Stars have yes. just scored the first goal yes. of the game. One oh, nothing Dallas yes. on Colorado. I'm on Dallas, baby. Dallas two step back to back, Morency. You know what? I, you know what the craziest thing is, dude. When you were at that Oiler game and the game went to overtime, all I thought about with the conversation, you go, maybe I should just do a video. Hey, everybody, I'm out of here. Gabe, despite losing every game in overtime this year, still like doing good in the playoffs. Imagine something went our way once in a while. It'd be crazy, buddy. It'd be absolutely nuts. I knew you were. Yeah, doomed. probably. Nah, I, I was kind of expecting the worst, to be honest. But I was smart as I was sitting in the arena. And I did it early in the game, too. Mm -hmm. I was like, this game's going to overtime. And I got it at, like, plus 320, Joe. So that was Thanks. a nice little bonus on the way out. It was a prof It ended up being a profitable uh, in Denver. But we'll get to that uh, series 
But uh, so yeah, Dallas is up one nothing. Who you on in this game, Joe? Sounds like Cam's on the Dallas Stars. I'm on the Colorado Avalanche. So oh, and I don't yeah. even like the Avs, with- but I'm on them. I think Dallas. Is I'm with well. you. I think yeah. I think the Avs can get the win here on their home ice. They were so strong during the regular season on their home ice. I just struggled to see them losing two in a row. But I did expect Dallas to come in and score that first goal. They've been so phenomenally strong at doing so. So live odds right now, plus 180 on Colorado. I absolutely love. I put a half a unit pregame. So I'm going to go in and bet them plus 180 right now. Dallas, Gabe, Dallas has scored the first goal in every game of this series. They won every, like the first period. They're the best road team in the National Hockey League. If not for Georgiev tonight, they'd be up like five goals. They're dominating this game early. Like the Dallas Stars are a damn good hockey team. Like they're, and when they go to the road, they play a way better game. When they're at home, they play too loose. When they're, when they're on the road, you see what they do. Everybody's in position. They back check together, and they murder people. Like, they're a very complete hockey team. Well, one team that hasn't I, lost on the road, the Vancouver Canucks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been I've told out. people they're a better, better road team, but they haven't lost on the road. They won every game in Nashville. They win the first game in Edmonton as well. You got to win on the road, but I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's a home ice disadvantage, Joe. Home ice doesn't really help. Like, it's not helping. Teams in hockey seem to enjoy going on the road and silencing buildings. Teams seem to play more disciplined and structured on the road. And we see it time and time again. I think that players get caught up in the in in, in the home stuff, too. You can't help but, like, if you're a player, you're, you know, you're coming into the arena, you see a bunch of people partying outside the arena, you're seeing, like, the enthusiasm in the city and you're like oh man we better win like right like these guys really want to win for like and then it starts to build so i think the canadian teams are under more pressure right like they actually do have that you better win we can't lose and let the city down carolina hurricanes if they lose you know people are just going to go move on right to nc state football after and be like well okay Like, you know I mean? I mean, that was a fun time, but you know, when's the, yeah. when's the NASCAR race start? Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not the same as life and death. I think the players feel it, and uh, it backfires. It just does. But you see it time and time again in the NHL. Home ice disadvantage. See what the I Leafs, say, the I, Leafs, yeah, and not right. just the Leafs though. The, the Nashville Predators guys have lost. They got swept on at home by the Canucks, and they had lost like four or five in a row before that at home in the playoffs, which is weird because they have like a good environment there. Um, the, you see the Colorado Avalanche right now. The Dallas Stars are, are having a hard time at home. The Edmonton Oilers, time and time again, teams struggle at home, Cam, in the NHL playoffs. Too much pressure, Gabe. You played the, the game. Rangers, you wanna... The Rangers yeah. today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, Carolina played great tonight. Exactly. Too. No, it, it, I love betting on road teams in the National Hockey League. You said it. They try to do too much in front of their fans, and the other team, it's like wrestling. You're the heel, and then you just get in their heads. Look at Carolina. They didn't even panic. Rangers are up one nothing. They killed them in the third period, man. Shesterkin was amazing in this game, too, but finally they got some puck luck. By the way, Gabe, Nikushin, the injury for Colorado for the substance stuff, he's done. So he's not, it doesn't even matter if they get through this series. He can't play another hockey game this year. That's huge for a, a team that already has depth issues. And I'll say one thing. I'm actually going to defend the Urias. I know McDavid got cross-checked, but didn't anybody see McDavid with his nice two-hander axe to the player behind the net, too? But he's Connor McDavid. So, he can do whatever he wants. So this My first, thing, though, exactly. but first, this dude, though, that was the dude that was doing the coke on, on uh, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. Snowfall. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, sure. I, yeah, they pictures of no, this guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he's... I'm like, I like, how did it take so no. long for this decision to come? Like, it's basically like he did is, a video. He the drug test. He's <laughs> coming. He failed no. another drug test. Like, what's he doing? Like, like, dude, everyone knows you're doing no, drugs, but like, so stop doing them. Like, when you got to take a test, yeah. like, figure out the drug. No, but I was right. watching the shows, and I was watching, like, the intermission, and they were all talking like he was the biggest victim. Uh, you know, I really feel sorry for him, this poor guy. It's like, he's an idiot. Like, I know we live in this victim society now. And listen, I've done dumb things. We've all partied and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying, Cam? But, like, yep. Kill if you're in the NHL and you just are constantly doing cocaine and posting videos and stuff, you got a problem. You're an idiot. 
I'm not yeah, gonna feel you're sorry not. for you. Like you're an idiot. Like, you're a like you perfect. can even do it and not do videos, and no one will ask you or care about it. They didn't test you for it. You right. you're, no an like, you're an it's idiot. Almost, I don't feel yes. sorry for you. You're stupid. <laughs> it's my game. We rob a bank. We He'd be off my go. team, Cam. I'd be like, oh, you're yeah. off the team. Say, go to rehab. Good luck with your life, but you're cut. Like, here's your check. You're cut. Like, so me and me, Gabe and Joe are walking out of the bank with bags of money. We go to the bar and go, hey, everybody, we just robbed a bank. Drinks on us. <laughs> like, this guy's a stooge. He posts everything all the time. Hey, tip people, your athletes, it's a different time. Don't put stuff out there, man. Everything's out there. And you're going to yeah, get Yeah, but he wasn't. He also, cut. he also, like, <laughs> spoke pretty crazy to the cops in the back of the car. Yeah. Well, I think it's the same guy, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think he was threatening to get yeah, caught and killed and stuff. Like the guy he has no business being in the league, man. Uh, he's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Look at Dallas. Like they just got breakaways and this. Like I can't believe it's only one nothing. Like Colorado could. Uh, they might win this. You know what, Joe? I don't know if I even want to bet them live, but I got. I that's the nice All first right, period. So, I believe so we're they're back. continuing. I yeah, I think we just continue on through uh, we're live on YouTube and that's the whole thing. It's another thing that I learned on the radio many, many years ago when once I thought I was off the air, we had a tower. It was like, you know, one of those 50,000 watt type of deals. It was cool, but sometimes it would get knocked off like weather, storm, whatever like that. And once I thought we were knocked off and I sat there like dropping F-bomb after F-bomb for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it. Cam, I was sitting there yeah, like no. casually with my I feet up in the studio, just yeah. like, ah, oh, this effing that and that effing power and oh, F that and all oh, I can't effing this. Gonna sit here and F, F, F. Then the phone rang. They were like, hey, hey, it's on. Like, hey, like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> like, I've, I've, like, I've learned, I've learned, you gotta, you always gotta assume there's whatever's a mic on, Joe. That's, that's the moral well, of the story. Well, I think you, you know end up like a fired yeah. broadcaster. But like I said, I don't, I'm not offensive or racist during commercial breaks. Mm. You no, might catch not. an F-bomb or something like that, so I don't have to worry about, mm. like, like some of these broadcasters, they deserve to get fired. Like, they randomly right. say stupid things during a commercial break. It's like, yeah. well, you know, you're a moron. Like the guy like uh, that was doing the coke in the NHL. You're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a stooge. I'm with you, Gabe. I, I I know that stuff too. And yeah, remember a couple of broadcasters, the girl was talking off air about somebody, they caught her, boom, you're done. So you got to be really careful. Uh, always assume the mics are hot. We All we do is talk about our bets and crack bad jokes anyway. You're right. We don't do anything like nefarious. So we're fine. So as far as the, um, as far as the, you, you brought it up, Cam. So I knew the Oilers and the Canucks would get physical. It was going to get nasty, but it's really escalated. There's a lot of bad blood on the ice. It's enjoyable to watch. And to me, the story would be a non-story if it was a fourth liner that would have got cross-checked at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. It's only because it's Connor McDavid that it's a big deal. It looked worse than it was. It was sort of accidental. I understand. I'm, I, I'm not going to be naive and say, like, whatever, the NHL, you know, was in a, not in a position to say, well, it looks so bad because it did look so bad. But the whole thing is with the NHL, was there an intent to injure, number one? Not really. Connor McDavid goes in and starts hacking at Susie. Susie's about to cross-check him. He doesn't know there's a door off is going to cross check and just sort of nudge and push McDavid from the back. So McDavid falls face first into a stick, right? So the intent wasn't there. It wasn't like a malicious, yeah, I'm going to murder Connor McDavid right now. It just sort of happened that way. And then also the NHL always really generally goes by whether the person got injured or not. I always talk about it. Like you can shoot a gun at somebody in the NHL, but if you miss them and the bullet didn't hit them, They'd be like, well, it didn't hit him, so there's nothing we can do. Connor McDavid's not hurt. So there wasn't really a real intent to injure, and the player didn't get injured. Yet, what about Connor McDavid drawing blood and hitting hitting Hughes in the face earlier in the series? What about your boy, Zach Hyman, coming in with the vicious cross check right before all this happened? Right? Like, the Oilers have been doing stuff, too. They just don't like getting beat up right now, Cam, by the Canucks. The Canucks are in their heads. They're pushing them around. And 
the their best player, Mr. McJesus here, took a cross check to the throat and the face. We'll see how the they bottom, respond now. Here's the bottom line. It's like the Tom Brady uh, era when we played in the NFL. McDavid gets away with a lot of stuff. I watch these games intently. Sometimes he even like, a, I'm not going to say he a, a complete slew footer. I've seen him do it before. I've seen guys on his team do a lot of dirty stuff. But they never get called out for it because apparently he's the uh, NHL's meal ticket. Listen, when you're swinging your hockey stick like an axe, there has to be some kind of repercussion for you. So the whole thing, you're right, Marenzi, these, these scrums happen, but it always seems like, and Joe, you know this too, the league loves the Oilers, and it's always going to be that way because they got three damn stars on their team, and that's the NHL loves it. And, you know, that guy would have to kill somebody to get suspended. I know it's probably not a popular no, take, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Yeah. And I'm not what do you think? Oh, I agree. And he'd be suspended with pay. Yeah, the league loves Connor McDavid, right? They put a little bubble around him. Anyone comes inside his bubble, they're getting penalties. Actually, you guys, I found on a couple of books you can bet the penalties, the number of two minute penalties in a game. I took it this weekend between the Florida Panthers and the Boston Bruins. You can find it on your books. I think this one is going to be so many two minute penalties out there on the ice, especially for the, well, Vancouver is going to get them because it's in Edmonton. They are. It's true. You're getting numbers yeah. like six and a half, yeah. right? I wouldn't. I, mean, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be some big bloodbath like people think tomorrow. But I'm going to say Gabe, one, Edmonton's going to get every call. You you know it is because if if Vancouver goes up three to one series and everyone has oh Edmonton Edmonton that like Vancouver's not as popular as Edmonton. Let's call it out for what it is. It's like a small. Even though Vancouver's not a small market, it's like a small market NFL team. Yeah, but really, I don't really well. Right. We'll see. But I don't find that the refing has been has been balanced one way or the other personally. Uh-huh. I'm not like just, you know what I mean. I don't I don't I'm, think there's been I don't think they've been biased for Edmonton in the series. I don't think they've been biased for Vancouver. I think they've just called it the way that they've seen it. No, but I do agree is, that McDavid gets protected more yes. than other people, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let it get into. I like if I was the Canucks, I wouldn't be let it get into my head that oh, they want us to lose tonight and stuff like that. And we're not gonna get every call. You just got to continue to play your game. Yes, yes. Oh, they, I agree the, with the you. The Canucks have been playing on the edge, and the refs yeah. haven't called them for a lot of stuff. No, I agree. But I'm saying if Vancouver goes up three to one, they want the series to go as long as possible because it's two damn Canadian teams, especially for the whole Canadian market, right? Like this is. One of the things that I'm thinking about, I'm not saying the refs are going to rig the game. I'm just saying Vancouver better play a clean game because a lot of tic-tac calls are going to go in Edmonton's favor. That's what I think is going to happen. Joe, who do you like tomorrow in the game? I like Vancouver. I like what we saw out of them in that last game, how they were able to limit the Oilers out there in it. And you're right. This team has been so solid on the road. The plus money is hard to say no to. It's plus 172. I don't hate the puck line plus one and a half at minus 150. It's just getting a little juicy. Might be a parlay piece for me because I do think they play tight out there. I think it's really, you know, one goal game, probably overtime game as well. So I like it. And you're right. Like with those hits coming, who was it from Vancouver that hit the guy into the hit Zach Hyman into the bench? Zach Hyman was holding on to him as he went down. <laughs> Who was that again? That from was uh, Zadorov put Kane was into the bench, and then yeah. Hyman Hyman grabbed, which was a stupid thing to Hyman to do. It was like, and he got called out for. Bexa brought it up at the intermission, and Corey Perry. Corey Perry's been around so long; he's smart. He told, like, you could see Perry on the bench telling everyone, back off, back off. Because the door off came in and lit up uh, Kane. And they were ready to, um, they they gave the door off the penalty. Because not only did he check him out, you can check someone over the boards. Mm -hmm. But he finished it off, like WWE style. <laughs> like, okay, like, well, when he saw Kane That's was going over the move. boards, like, he made sure, like, I'm going to yeah. hit him into the bench type of thing. And he tried yeah. to. But the Oilers are so dumb, they they grabbed uh, they grabbed the door off stick as he was trying to leave, and it was Hyman that grabbed his stick after Hyman got away with a cross check too right before that McDavid stuff at they the did. end. Yeah. Rick Tockett was complaining about that, just saying, "Hey, I hope they see that." Like I said, if it wasn't look at so it's the, their inconsistency though. Brad Marchand, whether you like him or not, he got knocked out cold right on the ice, and he got hit in the face. You don't get knocked out cold unless you get hit in the face. 
And some say he got hit with the stick and like Bennett just like cold cocked him type of deal. It happened so fast, but nothing happened to him. No suspension. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's Marchant that he was the one that got hit. If that was Connor McDavid, like if if Connor McDavid did the same cross check last night, I bet you he doesn't get suspended for it. I agree 100%. No. That's I almost think it's that's a factual statement. Like there's no way they're taking this guy off uh for a game with ratings and all the other things. Watch McDavid, McJesus, whatever the hell you want to say. I got to tell you, Gabe, your boys the door off's turned into a real monster out there. We don't want to piss that guy oh, off. He's he, he he's tough as hell. He's a he's real a mean dude. No, no, you're right. He's got bad <laughs> intentions. Bad intentions. And that's what Vancouver needs. That's the one thing. He played for the Flames, obviously, yeah. but he uh, yeah. he really doesn't like the Oilers for real. Yeah, oh, like yeah, he hate, doesn't so. he doesn't like the players. He doesn't like the city. He was talking about he like every time he talks, he took a shot. Like he upset people in Edmonton. They said, "What are the fans like in Edmonton?" And he said, "Oh, they're very into hockey." And he goes, "Why wouldn't they be? There's nothing else to do here, right?" So he went down that <laughs> road about how it's Edmonton, Joe. He's basically it's saying it's he's saying it's Edmonton. You McDavid too. Like they the they just come off as whiny. And then they gotta worry about their goalie tomorrow too. So it looks like it's gonna be Pickard. They're not gonna be able to trust Skinner tomorrow here. We called this. We said Skinner, you had nothing. LA's a whole different story, bro. And that's the thing. Once you're hot, you're not. He's letting in those goals. And kudos to Rick Tockett. Because Shelovs was there. He was going to pull him. He gave him a chance. And then look what he did. He's pulling up, pushing all the right buttons right now. And that's hockey, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Fantastic. I've got like the I've got the Vancouver Canucks to win the series in six games. Wow. And I am a little bit concerned about the five. And I said it before when I took my bet. But what's great about this is I got the Canucks to win the series in six games at 16 to 1. Beautiful. It's currently, it's currently, um, no, excuse me, 10 to 1. That that one was 10 to 1. That one's 10 to 1. The 5 was 16 to 1. It's uh, in six games was 10 to 1. Let me just get it right here. Yes, sir, it's 10 to 1. In six games, it's 10 to 1. And I got a piece of 7. I still think it, but it's down to plus 350 right now, guys. The, uh, the Canucks oh, wow. in 6. Big difference between Ted and all the way down. And mm-hmm. last night before the game, I took the Canucks to win the Western Conference at plus 800. And right after the game, that was cut in half, too. It's like plus 350 uh, right now. Still a lot of hockey left in this series, but I do think the Canucks are going to win, Joe. I thought they were going to win coming into this. All the pressure was on Edmonton. They don't deal with pressure well. The media is so negative there. They like they they were all over them last night. They're all over them today. You can just sense like I don't know. I, I've said this before about the Oilers. I said this like years ago too. With Woodcroft always doing his interviews after the game. I don't know why they give so much access to the media of this team. Like stop doing so many interviews. Just say no, we're not talking. Just say it like yes, no, yeah, yeah. No, we look for a big game tomorrow. That, Thanks, guys. That's See you what later. the Leafs did, and they still <laughs> yeah, like don't right. no more yeah, interviews. But don't. <laughs> Edmonton, right, it's like they do these two hour yeah. like psychological like, skinners. It's like he was yeah, on the yeah. shrink couch today. Well, my emotions yeah. and I got to rein it in. It's like, dude, you don't need to tell these people this. Just say I didn't play well. Ooh. Next question. Like, yeah. don't like they're they're rattled. And you see Leon Dreisaitl after saying, oh, you know, it's not good goaltending. We keep hitting the post. Like, okay, take a shot at the kid. Don't give the kid credit if you want. But the Canucks are in their heads. They're going to win. The only question is how many games to me now. What do you say, Joe? How many games do you think it goes now? You know what? It might be five because I could see Edmonton, if they lose that next game, they're going to go into Vancouver defeated. So I think it actually could be five. I think that Vancouver are going to win tomorrow and then they'll lose on home ice in game five and then they'll Mm -hmm. go and they'll win again in game six. That was my original prediction before the series. I stick to it, Ken. If Vancouver wins wins the next game, 
Edmonton's not the team like Carolina, and if you notice the way they play, look what Carolina did, right, Joe and Gabe? They didn't panic or whatever. Edmonton's going to force the issue, and that leads to big problems when you're playing hockey. Odd man rushes and stuff. It's not good. And Vancouver can capitalize because, no offense, I know Calvin Pickler. He was like a four-string goalie for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he was Colorado and Detroit. The guys, when you, when you, when you say journeyman, that name pops up. Good guy. Players like him, but I'm telling you, Gabe, if they get open looks and stuff, Pickard, there's a reason why he's a third string goal. It's Calvin Pickard. So if Vancouver wins the next game, Edmonton's going to force the issue, and that's a recipe for disaster. What? So what's but your pick for tomorrow, Cam? Uh, I think I think Vancouver. I'm they think they might win the series in six. Now I had Edmonton in seven. I might have to change my tune here, but I do think Edmonton wins one. I think they win tomorrow, and then I think Vancouver wins the next game, and then maybe finishes them off when people are going to bet on Edmonton again. But I think it's going to be a great game. Tight bet the regulation tie, probably uh, t- pretty tight game. Yeah, th- Vancouver was plus one and a half, minus one forty on my book. They're getting no respect. Are you kidding me? I ha- you got to bet that, and they won the game outright. You just keep hitting Vancouver on the money line, basically. Mm-hmm. They're underdogs in every game. They're big dogs on the road, and they're small dogs at home, right? So the, you know, but uh, can they just can they continue this dominance on the road? It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough for them. But now Edmonton with this goaltending situation coming into this, they might go back to Skinner. Still, it's not a guarantee they're gonna start Pickard. I saw Bruce Boudreaux talk about, he said, you know, you can go to the backup goalie and you think that you're you're doing your team a favor, but he goes, not if they think the backup goalie isn't any good. And he said, like, the team needs to believe in a backup goalie. He goes, I don't know if they believe in the backup goalie there, which was kind of like, I mean, you know, it's a fair point, actually. Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be scoring six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Miss call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul should be called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late sort night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Ramsey, the pits, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between, including Joe Madden uh, in the house uh, with us right now. And I understand 
Uh, the crew is back uh, right now. They're wearing hazmat suits. Uh, there was a gas leak uh, in the house. Uh, I think uh, it's an oil spill. We were talking about the Edmonton Oilers. So uh, we're glad that everybody is uh, safe uh, right now at the Bellworks uh, Studios. So one nothing for the uh, Dallas Stars in this hockey game. And we have two Dallas teams playing. Pretty crazy for Dallas sports fans. Both their Dallas teams are playing at the same time. They're in the same rotation on a, on a game-by-game basis. So one nothing for the Stars right now. And 54-43. Cam, you said you had the Dallas two-step uh, going on. Yep. So before we get Joe out of here, uh, looking at tomorrow's game. So, Joe, Boston Bruins, Florida Panthers. This series also very physical. And I also find it very comical and somewhat enjoyable. And I told you, Cam, it would happen, actually. Um, I said, well, it doesn't make you feel better as a Leaf fan. But I said, don't worry. The Bruins will get dummied by the Panthers after. And they are. And it's funny mm-hmm. watching the Boston Bruins of all teams cry about physicality. I mean, man, this coach cries more than, like, um, uh, Lisa Simpson. Like, uh, like all he does. <laughs> Like Jim Montgomery, Montgomery. Oh, all he does. <laughs> yeah, all he does. Why the bed? It's like, dude, you're the Boston Bruins. Man up, bro. You have like the you you besides Tom Wilson, I don't know. Like you could debate who's dirtier between the two of them. They're the two dirtiest players in the NHL. Uh Marshawn and 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 Tom Wilson. And you're upset. Like you're always upset. They're crying about goals not counting and goalie interference and stuff. I've said, I tweeted out tonight, Joe, everybody should shut up and stop complaining. Like, seriously, it's the NHL playoffs. People are going to get hit. (laughs) There's going to be controversies. It is what it is. Play through it, right? I Like, I've really bitched little about the officials in this, in the the Canucks Oilers series. Like, whatever. Both teams have gotten away with stuff. It's the playoffs. You're going to hit people. Stuff's going to happen. Play through it. The teams that cry and bitch about it the most, they're the ones that lose, Joe. I'm telling you. You see the Oilers? Yeah. Like, their coach is, like, very, like, he's like a uh, the Knobloch guy can. I prefer oh, Woodcroft. Yeah. I like Woodcroft's, like, his face is after, like. <laughs> he looks like my butt. Like, he'd be like, like you always had that, like, pain look. Like, yes. Like, the car guy know. Like, he looks. Nice. Special dinner. He would answer every question. Knobloch remind me of like I don't know some right. like rich yuppie that was unhappy. Yeah, with his BMW right. took too long for the valet. Hey, well, you know, the league, the league, the league. Guys, gonna have to take a look at that. It's like, yeah, hey, take a look at what? Takes- like, how about you take a look at your crappy goalies? How's that sound? <laughs> My car only takes premium. Yeah, that's like, he looks like one of the with snake on the Simpsons. Right? Oh no. Yeah, no, you're right. He looks like kind of like a guy you'd go golfing with who cheats. You know, a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the knob block guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, he just got that sort of nasally whiny sort of. Well, you know, we're trying, and the refs need yeah. to do more. And like, like shut up. No, it's actually a nice game that bosses do this because. And you even said it. You go, I'm not even a Leaf fan. These guys are breaking Leaf sticks and stuff. And I got to be honest with you, they didn't complain as much as they usually do. But it's just one of those things. Like, yeah, Boston, you're you are the guys that are complaining. You just see what you do to other teams. So, hey, man, turn about his fair play. You are on to something, play. though. I think. I think you're right mm-hmm. in the way, Cam. Like, each series, they're going to like someone more. Mm-hmm. And they like – I don't know why they don't like Toronto. It was weird that they they squeezed the Leafs as much as they did in the series. Like, Boston got away with a lot of stuff. And a couple of things that were, like, very impactful. There was a yeah. goal once in one of the games. I think it was called Buddy on the Bruins, like, was down behind the net, and he held the Leaf defenseman stick, and it allowed the puck to bounce in front of the net. It should have been a penalty, and it led to a goal. They didn't do anything about it. Um, Marshawn tried to, like, injure Bertuzzi. You know what I mean? The knee-on-knee stuff. They didn't do anything about it. Like, they really didn't. They were like, whatever. The Leafs need to toughen up. I think that was their attitude. Well, the Leafs need to toughen up. But now you see... The the Panthers get all the calls against the Bruins now. I'm not going to dispute it, but it's just comical to watch them cry, Joe. But I will agree that the league would prefer the league likes the Florida Panthers. They like these southern markets and warm weather markets that mm-hmm. are. They know they're going to sell Boston Bruin tickets. They know That's... that the Boston Bruins are a popular team, and these these fans are going to show up no matter what every year, right? Yeah. They need to sell and save these teams. That's you it, know, they, all these teams, like they do. 
My brother did tells me he go like he lives in Calgary, like Flames Club. You get tickets and stuff like that. They will show up for that team dead last or whatever. They love hockey in Alberta. Leaf fans, same thing. Even though well, the not so much anymore. <laughs> the no, Flames yeah, popularity is dwindling. You, you, you know what I mean, though. Like <laughs> Montreal, Toronto, yeah. like. Gary knows that it doesn't matter about the team's performance. They will find ways with the corporate sponsors to fill buildings. Those other teams have to be successful for them to make it hand over fist. It's a very simple concept. You said it. The NHL is a gate-driven league. They have to make money from these but things. Because so if, these branch, if, these, if they suck, they're not going to make as much dough. That's bottom yeah, but line. Because they, because they want that to happen doesn't automatically mean I know that they're doing something to make it happen. There's no dispute that they would prefer certain teams advancing. We all know it. Yeah. They're never going to admit it publicly, but we are, and they know it. They know that we know it. I mean, would they rather the New York Knicks in the NBA Finals or the Toronto Raptors? Oh, what do you think? Yeah, right? Exactly. Like, are the Utah yeah. Jazz or, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> or the, Lakers. the Utah Jazz yeah. or the Boston Celtics? Like, are the Lakers, right? Like, it's not, it's not rocket science, but... I don't think that like it's is like a vast conspiracy like people think. No, as much. I, I I agree with you, Gabe. I don't think it's a conspiracy, but they do have this, <laughs> like preferential treatment. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say games are fixed or rigged or whatever. Other certain teams get more calls, and I I think there's there feels like there's an agenda, but I'm not going to say anything is manipulated. That's not true. It just I think it's with stars. Play. I think I think things are, but I don't think it's always like the city. You know what I mean? I think Connor McDavid is their big pretty boy star. He is. Whether he's on a Canadian team or an American team, they promote the hell out of this guy. They do, Joe. Like, he's the face of the NHL. So the face of the NHL took a cross-check to the throat. They're going to do something about it. Brad Marchand, one of the pests of the NHL, takes a headbutt, like, stick to the face, (laughs) gets knocked out cold on his feet, and they're like, wow, that's hockey. Denver Nuggets and say, whoa, just a week ago, they were that minus 115 or so price. Now we're looking at them at a 7 to 1 price. Any chances the Nuggets can actually come back? That could be still six or seven games, so I think that could be a little bit of a tighter spread between those two. But when you got those two guys, those two monsters, and, and Towns and, and Edwards, it's just really hard. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Missed call the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Well, the Dallas Stars are in control right now in Denver, Colorado. Wow, 2 nothing Stars. Nice goal from the side of the net here. 
and uh, Dallas are just relentless. They've dialed it up a notch, and uh, they're rolling. All right, uh, so we've got a new thing. We like the tweets of the day and different stuff, but uh, we've decided to brand it a little bit. The best of X, baby. Bring it on. Oh, yeah. All right, there it is. So, uh... (laughs) I thought it would be longer. It was quick. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> that was awesome. Right. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very it was a quick, uh, quick sound bite. So, yeah, Arda Ocal actually tweeted this out. And we know Arda from the old days. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Arda Ocal tweeted this out uh, last night. This is unbelievable. Look at this, Joe. So, Tom Brady, six foot four. Arthur Seelofs, six foot four. Tom Brady. Drafted in the sixth round, Arthur Seelofs. Drafted in the sixth round, Tom Brady. Replaced an injured starter, uh, Seelofs. Replaced an injured starter, Tom Brady. One first playoff game in a late comeback overtime win, Arthur Seelofs. Wins first uh, playoff game in a late overtime comeback win. And look, he's even pale like Brady was in the old days. Like This is a tan <laughs> picture of Brady. Like if we went back... And stuff. So I'm thinking, like, basically, like, this is the beginning of an I- iconic run for Seelobs right now. He's going to marry, C-Lobs? like, a supermodel. He's going to have roast about him, him in 30 years. You're right, Gabe. If, if you were to though, with, the, with that picture, I would say <laughs> occupation, drywaller, or magician. <laughs> like, Which one? Look at his mustache. Yeah, I, I, I don't this, like. That, that he's got the, the, his look is the best. Like that's so yeah, you got to be honest. The Canuck players were probably thinking we're so after like when they yes, saw this yes, kid when yes, he walked yes, in. They're probably thinking, "Oh my god, like, is this, this is our goalie." Is oh this the Zamboni like, driver's cousin? Who is this guy with the trick? Staff? What does he look yeah. like? He does for a living, Joe. I don't even know. I'm gonna say unemployed. Like, like, unemployed, like, like, magician, unemployed. ventriloquist, and uh, drywaller. He looks like know, he, say he works yeah, for yeah. his like uncle's garage, I'd say, or something like. Yeah, not a hockey or his daddy's business. What does he look like? He does, Joe. What's your guess? Look at Seelobs here. What, 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 like, what, what does he strike you as? You know what? He looks like a kid that works for his dad, right? He goes into his dad work, his dad's work, sits at a desk, and really doesn't do anything, just staying out of trouble. I don't House know. Painter. I hope you House, saw Brock Besser Painter. last night after the game in an yeah. interview. They said to Brock, they said, so what's Seelobs like anyways? Like, your kid seems to be pretty calm. He goes, I don't know. He goes, he doesn't talk. I've never really talked to him before. <laughs> right? And I've heard that from a lot of Canuck players. Like, I don't know what they do with this kid. Like, if he's isolated or something. But everyone says he doesn't talk. He doesn't really speak English. We've never really talked to him too much. And it's sort of like a pitcher now, Cam, that's got a no-hitter. Mm-hmm. They're like, don't talk to him. Everything's fine. <laughs> like, like you know what I mean? Like, everything is fine. Don't start, you know what I mean, joking around and stuff. JT Miller took his shirt. That was the only thing they did. Yeah. And they did that to make him feel good. Because, like, he was said, he, he, he said in the interview, he goes, no one on the team ever talks to me. Right? So, they sort of did that as a, hey, listen, we know you're here. We just don't want to put pressure on you, kid. Right? Hold on. Don't underestimate that move because when you're coming in as a six round draft pick and like third third on the depth chart there, you're kind of scared, right? And they put his little disco shirt on and whatever, and he he was really calm in the dressing room after that. Those little things are important things of a hockey team. It galvanizes them and the way he's playing, they have faith in this kid and they, they got well, he it brought back. it up, Cam. Yeah, he brought it up. Sea Lodge brought it up. He said, I don't really know these guys on this team. Mm-hmm. Like he hasn't been on the team, Joe. He's played four games. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. see, he he basically said, I, you know, he said, it's, I'm having fun getting to know the guys on the team more. And he said, it's about, he goes, we're really bonding on the ice. So, yeah, like, you know, he's got this relationship going to defensemen now and stuff, the eye contact and, like, the confidence of the team. Last night he did the interview, though, with uh, TNT after and stuff, which I wasn't a massive fan of. Like, let's not let him, mm-hmm. let, don't let the kid's head get too big here. <laughs> Doesn't need Wayne Gretzky and company like big at a You're right. Yeah. Bre- Gretzky, you know, no, I'd, be, I'd be like, no, no, no. If I was talking, like I'd be like, no, 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 no. Call them all. No, no, no. Yeah, smaller yeah. network, smaller yeah, network, please. Yeah, I'd say, yes, exactly. Yeah, tell, right, tell, I'll tell, I'll tell them. You local interviews like. only, kid. Local only. <laughs> <laughs> local interviews only. Sorry, TNT. He looks like the guy that goes up and down the aisles with popcorn and beer. That's what he looks like. 
Yeah, con concession. Right. Uh, yeah, he can be a concession guy for sure. Well, right now, he's one of the hottest goalies in the NHL. Thanks, Damn Joe. Right. Later, Joe. Look at the Denver Nuggets and say, whoa!